Hello everyone, it's Jennifer, and thank you for joining me today. We are going to be working with the Mars Marscapone Mini Bead Mix from Jesse James Beads, or Marscapone, however you wanna say it. We are going, we have six projects that I'm gonna be doing today with you, and um, so this might be a fairly long uh, video. Hopefully I'll try and trim it down for the earrings. I have one side already made up for each of them. And they're fairly easy. Some of them are just stacking a few beads like this one here. And something else we're gonna be using is we are going to be using the, this one is uh, Earl Grey, and this is Chain Reaction. And you'll see I already have it all taken apart. We're gonna be making a bracelet using this here. And let me show you. This is how it comes. So it comes in a full length, and the sizing of this is perfect because all you have to do, it comes with a ring already. And all you need to do is just detach the ring from one side, add a jump ring and a lobster clasp, or you can just take off that ring in its entirety. You can use a toggle clasp, you can use whichever clasp you want, but just know that this comes just like this and makes it easy just to, um, uh, throw it together, add a closure, and you have yourself a necklace. With these rondelles, so with these here, you see them, I have them all off. What I did for my chain, because I'm using a lot of the chain in other projects, what I did was I just simply cut with my flesh cutters on the loop of the rondelle wire wrapping. And what that does is it keeps that little jump ring that they use to link. So that's what I did there. And then I removed all of the wire wrapping from each of the rondelles. These are all the rondelles that were on mine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some, I'm using 22 gauge wire, and um, I have a longer piece here because I pull from a large spool. And so um, this is probably about six inches about, and that might be really good for someone that likes to use their wire to do the wrapping rather than using another tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, let's go ahead and first, let's trim off this end. That's where I wrap it on. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a wire wrapped loop. And so we're gonna come down about an inch or so, inch and a half, whichever um, you're comfortable with. We're gonna come in with our round nose pliers about a third of the way, because we don't need a large loop. And then I'm just gonna form over that top barrel. I'm just gonna release a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I need to push that to the back. And so it looks like that. And so then I just want it to be a little more centered, and there we go. Before we do our wire wrapping, we are going to go ahead and I just opened it up a little bit so I don't use my fingers. Um, if, I, if you use your fingers, that's great. It does work. Sometimes though, I find that I get too rough and I will um, change how the loop looks and I don't wanna do that. Okay, so now I have the tippy tip of my chain nose pliers. I just kind of locked it in place because then it helps me maneuver a little bit around um, on that loop because you do not want to sit on top of where your wires are crossing. Now what I'm going to do is I have some bent chain nose pliers and I'm just going to do three wraps. Let's get this a little bit more like this so I can fit. And once we get our three wraps, as you could tell, I'm just going around very slowly. It is, it, it is German style wire. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that. So it's 22 gauge German style wire in gold and Jesse James Beads does have this on their website. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of tuck it in a little bit so it's not poking out. We might have to do a little bit more maneuvering, but that is what it looks like. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and just string on all of our beads. And you don't have to use all of them. If you want to use spacers in between, you can. Seed beads are great little, um, little spacers. And if you have any leftover from your summer camp kit, 
you can use some of those too. Or you can just leave them as is for me. I just want the star of the show to be those crystals and that's it. So now since my, I have a front and a back to my loops. So when I'm doing wire wrapping. So where my wrap starts is the front and where I end it in the back, where that little tail is, is the back. So I want to have this, it going in the same direction. So now I'm gonna go ahead, and since this is 22 gauge, um, it doesn't take as much real estate in your neck. And that's what we're doing here, is we are actually creating that neck by adding our chain nose pliers. We are creating that neck. And I came down just a little bit, and we're gonna have that 90 degree angle bend. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add our chain, our bent nose or round nose pliers about in the same place. And then we're gonna go ahead and form that over that top barrel. We're gonna rotate and we're gonna push to the back. And I can already tell it's really, really wonky because I couldn't get my round nose pliers all the way in there. Okay, and now I can tell I'm already a little opened. So that's okay. It's perfect, and so now we're just gonna go ahead and add, uh, we're gonna add our little chain, okay? Then I'm just gonna go ahead and take the tip of my uh, chain nose pliers and just form that down. I have done it where I've just put my chain nose pliers on top of that loop and brought it down. Sometimes it doesn't come down completely right, and so then I've changed how the loop looks. So now what we're gonna do is, since I have a nice long tail there, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do with using my fingers, which I don't normally do. All right, so now we have our three wrapped loops, our three wraps. Now let's go ahead and come in with our flush cutter. We're gonna come in the back, and I usually um, cut right on top of that wire wrapping so that I have some room to add my, add my, I'm probably off camera, add my bent chain nose pliers and then come in with the tippy tip. And then the tail is just always sticking there. You don't see it on the other side. However, I mean, I don't think anybody will be able to notice except for you. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this side is tucked in okay. And sometimes when I do a wire wrapping, and there's no beads to provide that tension, I will not tuck that in until after I have the beads on there just because it, um, like I said, it provides that tension. Okay, and so now I just have just a very, very slight bend, which that is, I don't even care if it bends or not. And so um, I um, looks perfect for what I'm gonna be wearing it for. All right, so now I have a couple of open jump rings. I do like to use closed jump rings when I'm going to be making a bracelet. However, though, this is mine. And so uh, I am perfectly fine with having an open jump ring. I am using some open jump rings from Softflex Company. You, I can't even tell where the slit is on these. And so I have a hard time finding where the slit is. They are that incredible. And so, um, that's why I'm using those. And so sometimes I just have to put my, I mean, you can't see at all where it's at. I think it might be right there. And I could be wrong. So I just kind of take it and move it a little bit and see. Yep, I barely saw that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add that. And also too, it's not just about seeing the, um, the slit or not as to why you probably wouldn't want to use a, a close an open jump ring on um, pieces that you're selling is because it's the strength too but these are really super strong I've been using them for a long time and I've had very good luck with those all right let's see and all I do is I just kind of gradually open just to see if that's where the slit is very faint. Now if you want to add an extender chain on this, you can by all means do that. If you want to use a magnetic clasp, by all means you can do that. But there is our first little project, little bracelet. Again, I'm using Chain Reaction. That's where the chain came from and the beads. And this one is Earl Grey. All right, so let's put this one off to the side. 
And let's just go ahead and bring in these guys here. I have two projects on this one. So let's go ahead and put the brass over to the side. And so this one here is just stacking. I took two of the pearls from the bead mix and one of the larger crystal rondelles from the bead mix. And I just used a head pin. These head pins you can get, um, you can uh, get them at jessejamesbeads.com. Also too, I found these little findings packs, this from Walmart, and they do come with ear wires, jump rings, lobster clasps, head pins, crimp tubes, beading wire, um, also came with a German style wire, a 20 gauge, and some elastic cording. So very nice little um, pack that you can get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the pearls and I kind of want to make sure it sits on the on the head pin correctly. And what I mean by correctly, that it's flush and the side's flush. So I'm going to add one of the crystal rondelles. And then I'm going to add another pearl. And I've done this, um, I have done this style many, many times. It's a very easy style. Um... And I just, I go to it whenever I see pearls and I have some crystal rondelles. This is just such an easy pair of earrings to put together and a beautiful little style. All right, let's go ahead and just get this rotated a little bit so that it's more centered. Then let's go ahead and get that locked in. And since I have a smaller tail and these are fairly strong, I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers. And even though they're very strong, I still let go every half turn. Also too, because I feel like it's cleaner that way too. All right, so then I end it going straight out the back. Okay, so there's our wrap. And let's trim off the end here. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my bent chain nose pliers. I have a little bit of a tail sticking out there. Now it's not gonna rub up against anything because of the bead size, but for me, your piece isn't finished until you do this last little step. Okay, so now you see here, I don't have any ear wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some ear wires and I'm gonna use some 20 gauge. So if you were in a summer camp and saw the bonus class that I did with Sarah, we made some ear wires using 18 gauge, because that's what we had. Um, uh, but I typically will use 20 gauge, 18 gauge, it doesn't matter to me, um, but I'll typically use 20 gauge if I'm going to be giving them away as gifts or, um, or if you want to sell it. Something else you're going to want is you're going to want something to make your loops. I'm going to go ahead and use the six stepper, and I believe that that is on the Jesse James Beads website as well. Then I'm gonna come out probably just a couple of inches, and that is probably about a couple of inches. I have a good flush cut on this side, so this side I'm going to do a flush cut for here, and then I just want them to be the same size. So I'm going to just butt those up next to each other. And let's leave this one with a good flush cut when I use it the next time. All right, so I'm gonna trim them off anyways, but so I want these all to be at the same, okay? So these are at the same um, starting point. I don't want a large loop, um, so I'm gonna use step one of the stepper, and I'm gonna go ahead and put add both of the wires, okay? And, oops. And I don't want any of it sticking out. And I'm just going to rotate. And I'm rotating. Okay. And they actually both went at the same. So sometimes one will, one will um, go and one will need a little bit more help. And I do them at the same time because then I know that they're going to be exactly the same length, have the same loop, everything. So now what I did was I put it back in to that um, second step or uh, the first step. And so now I have it um, sitting on here just like a, like a, like a B or a six. And I have this up here. The loop is going 
this way. So the end is right here. So now I put it to where I ink, I position it to where the end is flush across to the other side. And all I want to do is just grab that wire and push it across. So now it's going straight and it's all across. Now, yes, you can um, open up your um, you open up your uh, loops a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to close them off when we go here. Or what you can do is you can always just kind of close them up a little bit here too if you want. But what you want is you want that straight across. So now you have this. And as you can tell, I'm keeping it very, very, um, very close. So now I want to use step five. So step five, I'm going to go ahead and add those in there now so that the loop and the close the closing of the, of the loop is facing this step five and now all i want to do is take that and form that over and so now we have this and two inches was probably a little bit much for the small loop it's perfect for if you were to use um if you were to use uh, the sixth step but i'm just going to use that fifth step now what I wanna do is you see how it's a little it's a little off, plus this wasn't the flush cut. So I'm gonna come in with my flush cutter about so, and give it a good cut right at that same point, okay? So yes, I have some waste here. Then what I'm gonna do is I want to come in and give it a bend, and I want the bend to be in the same place, so I'm using some flat nose pliers, and all I'm gonna do is just give it a little bit of a bend. Once I take that off, I have my ear wire. Okay, now if you want a little bit more of an angle of it coming out, it looks a little differently when it's a little bit of a bigger loop. I just wanted a small loop. Now here's the point where you can finish off your ends so you don't want them to be sharp. Just go ahead and take a file and file those down to where it won't stab you. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get that nice and filed down. There is a tool for this as well. Okay, now, yes, there is something else you're gonna want to do. You can either grab your bench block or if you have a wire whacker. So we're gonna go ahead and just put them both in the wire whacker and just one, two, three, sorry about the noise, flip them over and one, two, three, and this will help work harden it. You could do it more if you like. The, like I said, these are for me, so that works perfectly fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my chain nose pliers. Let's go ahead and take my chain nose pliers and open up my ear wire. And the front is where the wrap starts. So I know that that's the front. And then I'm gonna come in and close it off. And if you're not closed all the way, you can very easily just wiggle that back in. So you can just wiggle that back in, or you can just very carefully close it off just like so. Okay. Let's go ahead and add this next one on here. Let's open that up. It took me a long time to figure out the ear wires for um, to get the looping to go right. I wanted, I want my my loop to end in the back, and so I was kind of going with that gorgeous, you know, kind of like the tiara cast style. That's what I was aiming for. All right, so there is our first pair of earrings. So we have two projects done so far. We have these earrings and we have this bracelet. We are gonna continue on. And my mat doesn't stay, so I end up, it ends up scooching. All right, so now we have these earrings. And these are just the six drops that were in the mix and all I do is I'm going to add um, one to a head pin. 
I have a little bit left over from that, and so then I'm gonna make a second eye pin, and then I have an, a third eye pin here. So if you're gonna be doing this and don't want to use scraps from your head pin, you can grab two eye pins, or you can just grab some wire and make your own. I happen to have these. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just thread on our, um, our little teardrop, and you can have your teardrops going in whichever direction you want. Then we're gonna go ahead and come in carefully with our chain nose pliers and just get that 90 degree angle bend. And I say carefully because these are crystal, they will break. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna come in and I don't want a large loop. So I am just gonna come in and I have to think that I'm gonna be using that on another, on another bead too. I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my round nose pliers and I am not a single or simple loop um, expert. So I just wing it half the time. So there we go. Let's make sure that we can get that in there and closed. Okay, so now we have one. Now we have this other piece, right? So I just wanna go ahead and make my own little eye pin. Go all the way to the end there. It's kind of wonky. Because like I said, I'm not a simple loop expert. So then that would in turn not make me a very good eye pin expert. But what I do know is that I like to attach I like to attach this before I start um, doing my my loops just because I feel like it's easier and then I can open it up easier plus I probably learned that from somebody all right so now I have this little tiny piece again if you're not comfortable with the tiny piece that is okay I just try to minimize waste and just try to do what I can with what I have all right, so now, and again, see how tiny that is? It might be a little too short for your likings, but I'm gonna go ahead and make it work. I don't have a good flush cut on there, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna come closer to the tip. My loops are not gonna all be the same diameter here, but um, that's okay. This is just a way just another option for you to um, not to need so much materials. Okay, so we went ahead and did that. Now let's go ahead and yes, could I have just grabbed another eye pin? Yes, I could have. I could have done that easily, but I didn't. All right, so now let's go ahead and get this closed off. Make sure it's nice and good in there. Let's go ahead and thread that on. Let's go ahead and get this bent over. Let's get a little bit of... So in that project, this is the only waste. All right, let's go ahead and get that on there. There's our final loop. And if it's not straight, just kind of adjust it a little. Okay. And I tend to like to open the, um, the loop rather than the, um, the air wire, just because I feel like, I don't know, that just, is, just seems thin. So let's go ahead and add our ear wire here and then get that closed off. Okay. And now we have just a very simple, pretty, elegant, very rustic, but elegant look with that antique brass. So we have our second pair of earrings. So we have those earrings and we have this bracelet. We have three more projects. 
So we have here, again, I'm gonna use one head pin and, oh, it looks like I'm gonna need to make some ear wires. So I will make some ear wires. Okay, so what we have here is we have little pieces of the, of the um, chain. So I had a couple little pieces here and what I did was I went ahead and I just separated them. So I used one piece down here and one piece up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and there's that little link. There's a little link in between, like a little connector link between. And I just wanna make sure that that's the only thing that I'm cutting. And so now we have that. And we have our little, the little ball up there. And these bicons, oh, they're so stunning. I love them. And we're gonna do simple loops again. So let's go ahead and again, these beads are from the mix. Okay, and so what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and we're gonna do, yes, we're gonna do a simple loop. Again, be careful, these are glass. And also be aware that you're gonna be using this on the other side too. Okay, so now let's go ahead and You just don't want the wire sticking out, but then yet you gotta have a good grip on it. It's sticking out a little bit too much. There we go. And I lost the grip. Okay, so let's just continue going here. And I'm probably off camera. Okay, not the prettiest. Kinda want it to be a little bit better. Okay. Again, not the prettiest, but it works. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just open that up and I'm going to add that little square component. And if you wanna make these asymmetrical, you can change the order around. That would be really cute. All right, so now I want them to be Let's see, that one goes over there, so that, yep. So what I'm looking at is where the loop is because I want them to mirror each other. And so the slant is going down without attaching and the slant's going down, so that'll be perfect. Now I'm gonna take my little piece here and just make a little eye pin. Let's go a little bit more. Okay, so that it at least gets to the end. Okay, and so now what I wanna do is make it a little bit straight. Okay, and so now I wanna do is go ahead and open that up. Now again, you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. I'm just doing it this way just to minimize the waste. Plus these are really good head pins and so the wire is really good and I don't want the wire to go to waste. Okay, so that's what we have here. And here's what we have here. So let's go ahead and get that threaded on. And I need the loop to go that way. My hands are probably all in the way. And I'm just going to just gradually, gently move that over. And no, I don't have a good flush cut and that's okay. Can't see it that much. Go ahead and get that on there and start rolling back, okay. All right, so now what I wanna do is go ahead and open that up, and I'm gonna open that up, and I'm going to thread on the little ball, just like so, and close it up. And there we go. We have our second pair of earrings, and we're gonna to need to make another pair of ear wires. So we have I mean, our third pair of earrings. So we have those, we have these, and we have our bracelet. Okay, next up, another pair of earrings. And then we're gonna do a necklace. These are fun, and I think, oh, um, man, I can't remember. I think I used 22 gauge on this, so I'm gonna need to grab more 22 gauge. But what I did was I used the tassels, love me some tassels, and then I did a little wire wrap here, and I meant to 
um, do a, a bulky wrap, but then I kind of liked how that looked. I went two up and then one down, but it was on top of my second wrap. And then I'm using this bead here, one of the large rondelles, um, crystal rondelles. Then I have um, a rondelle here that has kind of like a, oh, it's right here. It has a little bit of the kind of mocha looking color and then one of these smaller rondelles. And we also use one of the little smaller crystal rondelles too. So since I'm sort of working from the spool, I'm gonna go ahead and since I have this little kink up here, I'm gonna go ahead and thread from the top down. So I'm gonna go small rondelle, small crystal spacer, larger rondelle, larger crystal spacer, and then our little little flower bead, okay? I have to remember to put that on. Also too, I need a bigger loop. So what I did was I came down about two inches. So I came down about two inches there, gave it that 90 degree angle bend. And on mine, I went halfway. Halfway on this size, this is a smaller, um, round nose plier, but if I were to use my larger ones here, I would go about a quarter of the way to get that same loop. I'm gonna go ahead and form over the top, release a little, and then get another grip, and now push to the back, and then I want that to look like so, okay? Then what I wanna do is open up that a little bit because I do not want to distort the loop at all and make sure that that goes on. The reason why I did it so large is because if you look that little connection, it's fairly wide. And so um, you want to allow yourself some movement. And I closed it and then go ahead and put my uh, the tip of my chain nose pliers. Plus then it allows some room for the chain nose pliers. Okay, lock that in place. And then what I did was I wrapped once and twice. And when I tried to come back up this way, it just sat on top of here so perfectly that that's all I wanted. And I believe the way I have it is yeah, so it's going from front to back. So this loop here is going front to back. So my back is back here, and that's where I'm going to trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim back here, just like so. Now, I am not going to tuck that in yet because I want my bead to be there before I start doing that because since it's not really technically like a, like a messy wrap, um, I need something to provide that uh, tension up against. So when you look at it, it looks like a little spacer. So now, since this is the front, my loop here, down here, is going this way, but the loop up here needs to go this way. So I'm just gonna flip it over to its side. I'm gonna come down fairly at the tippy tip. I want three wraps down, and then I'm gonna come up and do two wraps. So it's gonna be kind of a bulky wrap. Okay, so I wanna make sure I get two wraps in going down, or three wraps going down and two wraps coming back up. So I'm gonna come in about that third of the way, let go, push to the back, get that all nice and centered there. Since I have a nice, um, since I have a nice uh, size wire here, I'm gonna use it for something else, so I want to keep it intact. So I'm gonna just go very carefully. And I'm gonna go one, two, three. And now I'm gonna go ahead and come back up and do two wraps, just to kind of bulk it up a little bit. Okay, then let's go ahead and trim. And we'll use that in another project. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my bent chain nose pliers. Now I don't have the tension up again, I don't have like a bead up here. So what I do is I put my chain nose ply, my bent chain nose pliers 
right up against where that tail is because then I use that to go up against so that I don't change the form of this wrap. And I just tuck that in. Because if I were just to tuck it in, you would see the tail coming out of this way, just how I am. All right, so now I have to be sure to get this also. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers, the bent ones, and then I also want to make sure that my bead is facing the way I want it to, and the tail is poking out my way. It's easier to do it that way. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck that in. And so then I had a little bit of tension there. If I were to try and tuck that in when there was nothing here, then it might go off, start going back up the component. All right. And I will just grab a pair of ear wires so you don't have to sit through me making another pair of ear wires, but I will have another pair of ear wires here for the final picture. So we have one, two, three, four pairs of earrings, okay? Four pairs of earrings. Let's say four on camera. We are. Okay. So four pairs of earrings, and we have one bracelet. And now we are going to make our final piece. And our final piece is a necklace. Check that out. Okay. So I have some links here. This is from that chain reaction. These are all beads from the bead mix. And what I was planning on doing, let's show you this. What I was planning on doing was going ahead and adding that up there. I think I was gonna add that up there. And then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna use every single link of that chain. So I had one little link left. And so what I'm gonna do down here is make a drop. I think I have, I'm gonna make a drop. Okay, so we have these gorgeous frosted um, rondelles. We have these chunkies right here that have some frost on it. Then I love these beads, they're so pretty. Look at those, gorgeous, gorgeous. And we have, I guess, two more of those. Maybe I put them both up here. I can't remember. And I can't remember what it looked like when I was laying it all out. But um, then I'm using that ring that came from the, from the um, chain reaction. I'm gonna use that as my closed ring to clasp onto. Well, it's not really closed, but you know what I mean. So that is gonna go like so. Then what I did was, I think up here, I just did a couple of, I think I just did a couple of beads there. And then down here, I did a little something like so. And maybe I did these up here. Maybe I did these up here. And then I did those and then I did that, possibly. I kinda like these down here though too. So let's go ahead and do it like that. We're changing, we're changing it up. So then that's what I did. And so you can change it however you wish. If you wanna use some of these other components here, you can, some of these bead caps, you can do that as well. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, and I'm gonna use 22 gauge wire and I am just going to start wire wrapping. Now for the component down here, I believe I'm gonna do, let's get this. This is probably not all on camera. So for my component down here, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, add my stack here. So it's the little tiny rondelles and the tiny rondelle spacer, right? go ahead and do a simple loop and you probably know where I'm going with this because I'm gonna have a nice other side there and I'm gonna just 
go ahead and make up this simple loop. Okay, let's make it a little bit more centered. All right, then we're gonna attach it to that. But before we do that, I am gonna go ahead and do my little simple loop on this side. Again, if you have an eye pin, very easily to do that rather than um, working with such a small piece here like what I'm working with. All right, and so let's get that a little bit more centered there. Okay, let's go ahead and undo here. Let's get that on there. Okay, and I think I'm gonna do like a ring down here. I think I have, I do, I have one quick link left. That was from summer camp. I had one left over. Okay. All right, and again, I like my loops to go in the same direction. I know nobody sees it, I know, but I do. Okay, so let's go ahead and just turn it a little bit. Let's go ahead and get that bent. And if you want, let's give it a flush cut. That could have been the flush cut, who knows. All right, then let's go ahead and get that going. If you have one of those one-step loopers tools, you can by all means use that. You can use whatever you wish. Me, I don't know, I have it, but I felt like I was just uh, wasting wire. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so that's not the prettiest, but that will work. Then let's go ahead and just get that linked on to our quick link. Just like so. And then we'll get this little guy down here added. Oh, I have a little bit of a, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this one little, I have one of the little links still on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off so that it matches. Okay, and so now we have our little centerpiece, right? Now all I'm gonna do, and I'll do it off camera because I'm sure this is getting really super long. So now I have this that will droop down at the bottom, like so. What I'm gonna do is I will I will save this for the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and do all the rest of it. And all I'm gonna do is some wire wrapping. And I'm gonna wire wrap directly onto here and directly onto my chains with these guys in between. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and I will come right back. All right, so I totally cheated. I found that I have hit, I have eye pins. I didn't even know I had these. So I cheated up quite a bit. Here's why I don't like using them because then I end up with some waste. So I ended up with some waste. I have different sizes, so I was able to pick sizes, but that's my only thing, but that's not too bad of a waste. So now what I did is I'm down to the bottom. I've done all of my wraps. I did split it up a little bit, mainly because of the eye pins. I didn't have one long enough, but I kind of liked having it split up a little bit down here. And then I grouped those three together. I grouped those two together. I attached jump ring for this, um, cl not close ring, but the split ring. I went ahead and just attached it directly onto this component and then just went back down exactly how the other side was. So now we're here. I have these two to do, and then we'll be done. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and open up the bottom, or I guess in this case, it's the top of the eye pen. Get that closed up. I wanna make sure that that's all closed up. Yep, that one's closed up really well. Okay, let's go ahead and thread on this little chunky guy. And again, I'm not the simple loop um, expert. I really kind of don't use them very much, but for this project I did. All right, so let's go ahead and come in. And my loops are not all the same size. 
I know I'm really weird usually about that where I want them all to be the same size, but I didn't get them all the same size. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up this last one here, and then we're gonna be done. Six projects, and I know that this was a really super long video, but I hope you guys hung in there. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, and do that. Get that spun around. There we go. Get that folded over. Let's get ourselves our loop. And let's go up. Oh, that's kind of big. So I'm going to just come in and trim off a little bit. Just very little. Okay. And then. Let's go ahead and get that. Let's open him up and then we'll straighten him up after we get him on here. Oops. There we go. Let's get him onto our little quick link. Love these little quick links. Make sure that it's on there and then get that all nice and closed up and make sure it's nice and closed up. And there we have it. Kind of cute. I'm probably not gonna get it all on the camera, but there we go there. Let's do our scraps. Let's show our scraps for the six projects. Not too bad, not too bad, considering I was working from a huge, large piece. But so here we have that. Let's bring in, we have our earrings, earrings. Oh, I still need to grab a pair of ear wires. So we have, these guys, um, let's see here, there we go. Uh, let's close this up a little bit. I think it's a little off. It's coming out the back just a little bit there. All right, let's go there. We'll get some air wires before we take pictures of these guys. And there we go, so we have six projects using one bead mix. So we took one bead mix and turned it into a kit with adding some chain reaction. I do have those components left. So those are gonna go in here and we will use them another time in the future. And there we go. So we kind of, like I said, we turned a mini mix into a kit by using some chain reaction, some head pins, a quick link. We made some ear wires. We had some eye pins and just very, just put in some minimal, minimal um, wires and was able to turn into six projects. Pretty cool, huh? So be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you like it. Also comment. I love to see what everybody has to say and do subscribe. I will put a link to everything that I have here in the description if I can find that chain reaction. It might be in a bundle too. I think they have a bundle pack, which is pretty incredible for the chain reaction. I think you get five chains of chain reaction. It's pretty cool. I like to have those on hand on stash anyways too. All right, so, um, and like I said, just subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.